Hey guys, check it out. This is our long-term 2019 eGolf SEL Premium. It's the top of the line electric golf. And Volkswagen lent it to us for three months to test drive and to review to see what it's like to live with an electric car. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the most important thing about having an electric car, and that is what's it like to charge. But before we get to that, Let's talk about the price, because I've got the sticker right here. It has an MPGE of 119, that's the MPGE equivalent. It costs $39,790, and that is if you buy it in the states where it's sold, which are basically the states on the outside of the country, places like California. Now, the good news is if you buy this car, because Volkswagen, unlike Tesla, still has all their federal tax credits, you get a $7,500 tax credit from the federal government. That's pretty cool. And if you're in the state of Colorado, we have, if not the most, one of the most generous state tax credits for electric cars, and that's 5,000. So now you're looking at a $12,500 basically discount off that $39,000 price tag, plus whatever other discounts you can get from the dealership. And that's pretty good. But there is a catch, and that is the Volkswagen gets only about 125 miles of range on a full charge. So let's talk about how you get that full charge. All right, let's talk about charging it because that's where it gets really interesting because there are basically three ways to charge an e-golf. First way is this. Yeah, it's a bunch of cables, but when you get the car, you get this. And basically it's a charging cable that plugs into your typical wall outlet. 110 volt wall outlet and when you come home all you have to do is take this and plug it into the car and let me demonstrate how you plug it into the car you open up what normally would be a fuel filler cap but instead you plug in the power cord a couple of lights light up and you are all good to go now the Volkswagen has a 35.8 kilowatt hour battery to put that in perspective a typical Tesla model X that we have would have a 100 kilowatt hour battery so it's about a third of the size which means it gets about a third of the range or about 125 miles now if you're using a 110 volt outlet like I am right now if this battery were completely empty it would take you 26 hours to charge up the Golf completely and that is pretty long so there's a better solution let me show you Of course, this is the better solution. Now, of course, it looks like the other charging handle, but it's not because if you follow the cable, it's attached to this. Yep, that's an EV charging station. And we had that installed last week because we knew we were doing a lot of electric car testing. Now, this electric car charging station charges this Golf at a much higher rate. And that's because of this. Check it out. That is basically, let me unplug it for you. And that is a very similar outlet that you would have at home for a dryer. In other words, 240 volts. Of course, it does involve a little bit of cost. So first and foremost, we had to pay for the charging station. You don't need a charging station, but we wanted it because this will tell you how much electricity the Golf is sucking up. So over here, you can see we are keeping exact track of how many miles we're putting on it and how much electricity we're putting into it so that we know and we can report to you guys what it's like to live with and pay for an electric car. But the great thing about a charging station is that it allows for much faster charging. So let's plug it in. Same process as before. Plug it in, both lights light up, and now we're charging at a much higher rate. Basically, we can charge this car up at a 240 volt outlet in six hours. So we've gone from 26 hours to six hours and this makes it a very practical solution for at home because basically you can drive the car to work you can take it for any errands you want and then every night you can get a complete charge out of it now the question of course they're asking how much does a charging station cost well first we had to have the power outlet installed and luckily at our offices we've got our fuse box right here so to run the power from the fuse box to this plug cost $400 and we had to have a technician come and do that which may seem like a lot but 
you know, if you want to do this right, if you want to do this at home, you're going to have to do the same thing, unless of course you can have a very long cable, plug it into your dryer outlet and get it somehow to your garage. And that would be very uh, unpractical because there's probably a door in the way and you'd have to shut the door over the cable. You, you see what I'm saying. Now we also wanted the charging station because we wanted to keep track of how much power was going in the car. Right now the car is charged up so it's not actually charging very much. Uh, but this charging station costs $500. So we're talking at a total outlay of $900 to have the plug and the charging station installed at our offices. And that's very similar to what you would be paying at home if you wanted to go this route. Now I said that the Golf has a third way of charging and that's right here. That's DC fast charging. And if you're looking for an electric car, make sure that your electric car has the ability to fast charge. All Teslas do, but not all, let's call this a California compliance car, have that ability. But the e-Golf does have the DC fast charger built in. It's right here. And what that means is that you can take this to a charging point station or many other different kinds of DC fast charging stations around the country plug it in and then get a full charge if it's empty to up to 80 percent in an hour so that's perhaps the best and perhaps the most logical way of charging it when you're not at home and you might be asking yourself how convenient is it well recently Tommy took our Tesla Model X and went around Boulder and explore the different kinds of charging stations and how long it takes so if you want to check out that video head on over to TFL car I'll do a link to that video below and you can see what it's like to fast charge your car if you're doing it from a public charging station. So at this point you might be wondering what's it like to drive an e-golf and I gotta say it's quite brilliant. First and foremost to turn it on you put your foot on the brake and turn it on. Car comes to life and there's no worry of Well, I'm waiting for it to stop beeping. There's no worry of poisoning ourselves with carbon monoxide because there is no carbon monoxide coming out of this car. The other thing that makes this car unusual, especially if you're used to driving a Tesla, is the way that it regens power. Now, the Tesla, you can have it either coast or you can have it regen power. And what I mean by that is when it's in regen mode, Basically, you don't touch the brake. Every time you let off the gas pedal, or in this case, the electron pedal, what happens is the car goes into regen and it almost stops. It's as if you're braking. In fact, the regen in a Tesla is so strong that when you let off the gas, it will turn on the brake lights behind you. Now, the e-Golf and the German engineers have a different solution to that interesting issue. And the way they do it is... When you normally put the car into drive, you're in drive. When you put it into reverse, you're in reverse. But if you want the car... Oh, be quiet. But, let's try it again. If you want the car to regenerate power, then you've got three levels of regen. And every time you slap the shift lever over to the driver's side, it gives you more regeneration. And unlike Americans, we don't call it regen in Germany. They call it recuperation. Stage one, stage two, stage three. Perhaps the most interesting thing we've discovered since we've lived with this car for a week now is this number right there. Check it out. It says 132. Now Volkswagen officially rates this car at 125 miles of range, but with a full battery we're showing 132. And actually in our everyday testing, if you drive this thing in a very, well, let's call it sedate manner, kind of like your grandma would, you can actually increase that number up to about 150 miles of range. So that means doing things like using the heated seats, which are right there, instead of the full-on HVAC system, and not doing the classic electric car thing, which is getting on the throttle and accelerating like you're in a mad dash to get the best quarter mile time. But still, for a car rated at 125 to get about 150 miles of range, is very um, typical German. They tend to underestimate and overperform, and this car certainly does that. Now, there's one more question that you guys might be wondering about, and that is let's say you're at your aunt's house for Thanksgiving and you want to get a quick charge to the car and you're using the regular 110 volt 
outlet. How do you keep from somebody taking this charger and unplugging the car and running away with it? Well, it's very simple. Whenever you lock the car, it also locks the charger in place. So now it's unlocked, but check this out. If I lock the car, I can't pull the charger out. So if the car is locked, charger is locked in place. If the car is unlocked, charger comes out. Pretty brilliant and pretty good way to keep from somebody stealing your uh, charger. There's something that's very interesting about regeneration because when you think about it, what you're doing is you're using the electric motor as a generator to create electricity that then goes back in the battery which extends your life. But German engineers say that it's actually more efficient to coast than it is to regen power because the amount of energy it takes you to say get up to highway speeds is a lot more than the amount of energy the motors will put back into the battery if you let them regenerate power. So under certain circumstances like cruising down the highway you don't want that kind of non-linear throttle response where you're either what feels like braking or regenning or you're not. And in the case of the Golf, it allows you to decide how much regen you want. So when you're in the city, you could be at recuperation stage three where it's full on putting power back into the battery. And when you're on the highway, you could take it back down to stage one or completely turn it off so that when you take your foot off the gas pedal, you can just coast down the road and use that kinetic energy that you've built up getting up to speed. Now we're gonna do a lot more reviews of this car. We're gonna talk about what it's like to live with an electric car on a daily basis. So be sure to come back to tflcar.com for more news views. And of course, what it's like to live with an electric car reviews. See you guys next time, ciao.